everybody, welcome back to this week's Most Elite Podcast. This week we're doing the Spider-Man. Marvel's Spider-Man. Uh, this is probably like the third version of this video, a little behind the scenes for you. I recorded this video like five times or so, three times, four times, a lot of times, uh, because I just couldn't get it right. And by get it right, I mean do it in the style of all my other videos that you've come to expect from this channel, which there wasn't enough snark in my in the video. There wasn't enough bitter resentment to Spider-Man. It, it, it almost came off like a good review. And this game is getting a good review. Don't, don't worry. I mean, I'm going to get this game's good. This game's cool. Uh, but it was like too good. You know, it wasn't on. It wasn't enough shit talking. Uh, so I wrote down a little. I, I never write a script for these. If you go watch my alien video or whatever, I do a cool little bit there. I never write a script for these. I just write. I just do them. It's sort of a stream of consciousness. But some games like this one are a little big, so I need direction. Uh, my Monster Hunter video I did a while back with uh, Nishi. She'll probably be on the show again soon if I could, we can ever find the time to sit down. But of that Monster video, that Monster Hunter video, we had a little script thing there uh, to sort of guide the flow of the video. And I, th I find that this game needed that because this game's huge. Uh, so I wrote down a little script thingy and I'll probably put a screenshot in. It's not, it's not a script. It, it literally is a guy is ABCD. It, it's ABCD. And I just wanted to stay on ABCD to do the, to do the video justice and to do it right. Cause before again, I was just like, Oh man, fanboy, fanboy, fanboy. And you know, whatever people like Spider-Man. I don't like Spider-Man. I'm going to open a video with that. I do not like Spider-Man. I'm not a fan of Spider-Man. I like the Spider-Man and Deadpool comic that's running currently. I think it's awesome. I like the spectacular Spider-Man comic that's running currently. But I don't like Spider-Man. And quick backstory on why I don't like him. In 2008, Spider-Man had a, a comic book called... Uh, shit, it's been so long. Uh, One More Day, I think it was called. And... That comic ruined Spider-Man for me. In the comic, you know, Spider-Man's faced with, faced with a decision. Aunt May gets Aunt May gets sniper rifled. You know, this is after Civil War. He revealed to the world naively who he was under the guidance of Tony Stark, who you know he come to view as a father figure at this time. Uh. So you know, with that, it's gonna come villains. They're like, "Oh shit, you young boy from the block, got you." So, of course, they're going to try to clap you. And, uh, you know, situation arises where a sniper bullet is aimed for MJ. And he, of course, Spider-Man's and saves her. But Aunt May gets clapped. She doesn't die immediately, but she's dying. And he goes to all the best doctors. and doctor. He even goes to Dr. Doom, Dr. Strange, Reed Richards. He goes to all the best to see if there's any way they, they could save her. And Dr. Strange Street tells him, look, man, everything, every, everything dies. It's part of the cycle, you know, you, Aunt May has lived a great life, and, sorry about that, had an audio issue, uh, I don't remember where I was, hold on, yeah, so Aunt May's lived a great life, and, uh, you gotta let her go, this is Doctor Strange talking to, to Peter, or to Spider-Man, and telling him, yeah, let that one rock, homie, Doctor Doom said something similar, uh, like, fuck off, firstly, I'm Dr. Doom, secondly, medical science, like, she's like 90, bro, a sniper bullet fucked her up, that, that, this is it, you know, this, you better say your goodbyes, Peter, being Peter, unable to look, to accept such a thing, because he feels, Peter says that if she were to die in her sleep, or die naturally, he could, he could let it go, he could let her die, but considering that his actions drew the sniper fire, which is killing her slowly, he has to make it right. He's unable to accept failure, which is another thing about Spider-Man that I don't, I don't like. You know, sometimes you lose. You know, you, you don't win them all. And it's plenty of times he's lost in the comics. Plenty of times. Uh, you can't win them all. But, you know, Peter, mean Peter. So... Mephisto appears before him like hey yo what up I'm the devil I can save her and it's like bro this is the actual devil saying yeah I'll, I'll save her 
You know he wants something. So Peter's like, what do you what do you want, my soul, bro? And he's like, souls, no, that's that's two thousand late, bro. I want something more important. I want something. I want something that is critical to your being. And he's like, what? And he's like, I want your memories. More specifically, I want your memories of ever marrying Mary Jane. Because at this time they are married and they, they have a happy life. I want to take those from you. And anybody who's read Spider-Man knows how long he's worked to get with this woman, the woman of his dreams. You know, he lost the first girl, and, you know, and then Mary Jane stepped in. And it's been, you know, whatever ever since. So to hear this proposition of, yeah, I, I want I want your marriage and not immediately be like, fuck off, you know, and like just let Aunt May pass away to hear this and not to not do it. I don't know. Peter's a dickhead. So he does it. You know, Aunt May is saved, but Mephisto rewrites sort of history that Peter never told the world who he was, but also he never got with MJ and they never were together. And during the comic, Peter meets an older version of himself who didn't have MJ and he's like, he's basically Tony. He's older, Tony Stark, and he's he's like, you know, successful and rich, but he's alone. And like, sort of like Tony uh, in that sense. And, uh, he meets a he meets a child who would be his and MJ's daughter in that future that he didn't pick. He sees all the alternatives and still does it. And yeah, I I just after that I was like Peter's made some dumb decisions. This takes it. This this does it here. Fucking idiot. And I've he's never lived it down for me. I've always hated him ever since. So that's a little backstory of why I hate Spider Man. And going into this, I had to record it so many times because I mean you know. This is not that Spider-Man. This is a different Peter Parker. This is Spider-Geddon Peter Parker. He has his own comic. He's so popular. He was added actually into the Marvel Universe. He has his own comic with the, the suit that he wears in the game and everything. This is a different Peter. A different time. A different him. So, I don't hate this Peter yet. I'm getting there. Uh, but, that's a little backstory. And a part A on my little list that I wrote is... Who is Spider-Man? What makes him so appealing? Why do so many people fucking love him? Simply, the easy the, the easy answer is Spider-Man's one of us. He's the he's the down to earth hero who, while he can do all these amazing things, he struggles to pay his rent on time. This game opens with him like hearing car alarms and looking at the spider suit like, damn, do I put the spider suit on and go be Spider-Man? Then he looks to his left. And then he's all these final notices and past due bills. And he's like, L uh, suit, bills, suit, bills. And of course, he shirks normal responsibility to go do his self-imposed responsibilities as Spider-Man. Because, you know, Uncle Ben may have said, with great power comes great responsibility. But a responsibility to who? Yourself or to others? Because Peter puts others before himself all the time. And some would say, well, that's what makes him a hero. He puts the needs of everyone else before himself. I say it makes him a fool. Because, I mean, what what, what the fuck? I, look, if you want to be a hero and you want to save people, more power to you. Get on it. It's a thankless job. Uh, but to constantly, even to go so far as to lose your marriage, you know, like, in this game, him and MJ are broken up at the start of the game. They are not together. And, you know, whatever. They're, they're going to end up together. It's Peter and MJ. They have to be together. It's like Clark and Lois. But, uh, yeah, he's one of us. He's one of us. He's, he's, the, he's the guy we can all relate to. I mean, he's hyper-intelligent, but he's socially awkward. He is super strength. But he struggles with the day-to-day -day nuisances of relationship issues. And, you know, am I, am I being weird right now? Shit like that. He's one of us. And that's why he's so endearing. He is, you know, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's not this god who's untouchable like Superman. Or like one of the Justice League. He... He really, you see him around the way. He's that guy. You can, oh shit, what up, Spider? And you wave up, take pictures. In this game, that you can like high five civilians and stuff. He's, he's right there on the ground. 
He's he's experiencing what you're experiencing, and that's why we love him. As 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 comic book fans, and as I guess you know, he's a pop culture character. He's been around since the '60s. Everybody knows Spider Man. It's a Japanese version of him. Super Man and all that shit. Theme song's cool. He's fucking Spider Man. Everybody loves him. And with this game, they put you right in that. They put you right into you know he's just a hero. He's a hero, but he's like you. And they they push it throughout the entire game. You know he eats pizza when he's not fighting bad guys, and his he loves his girlfriend or ex girlfriend, and he doesn't know how to tell her. They text, you know, there's emojis. It's a very 21st century game, and a very 21st century Spider Man. And you know, there you have it. Who is Spider Man? He is. A kid who got very lucky, got blessed with superpowers, and squanders them every day. To me, that's that's my definition of who Spider-Man is. That I, He's not... I don't know. I just don't like him. And I think he needs to make better choices about his civilian life over his hero life. Because there's got to be a work-life balance, as they call it. If Spider-Man's his job, and Peter Parker is his life, he needs to... He really, really needs to balance the two. And he struggles with doing that. And I guess that's one of the reasons he's so relatable because a lot of us struggle with our work-life balance. A lot of us can't find that that middle ground where we're peaceful, you know. And he, we just, we're stressed with just the regular bills and am I going to eat this week? He's like, oh, fuck Dr. Octopus. He's got Hydro, a water person, and Sandman. So his stress level was crazy high. Again, it's self-imposed because he doesn't have to do any of it. He can just say, fuck all that. There's tons of heroes. The Fantastic Four in New York. The X-Men occasionally. You know? Why's he doing that? Whatever. Just moving on to point B of the uh, my little list. Story. This Spider-Man opens with you taking down the Kingpin. So, he's been... He's been Kingpinning for quite some time. And Spider-Man's like, today's the fucking day. Fuck you. You know? And he gets him. You, you take him out. And the Kingpin... As he's being arrested, he's like, who do you think kept all the freaks at bay in this city? You know, who do you think was actually protecting this city? You think I was bad? You're putting me away? And he's right. The second you put him away, like five villains show up. Like, oh shit, what up? You know, right on you. And the story, the story just goes from there, you know, putting Kingpin away. Finding out that there's a new villain named Mr. Negative affecting the, the minds of the city doing terroristic attacks seemingly random of course they are not and you you solve them with your detective skills with hope of mary jane and miles morales who's introduced in this as well and you all band together and stop the plot of the villain this game's been out for some time i will still say spoiler warning but the villain the main villain of the game is dr octopus he he's in this as well auto octavius he's not dr octopus at the start of the game you work in his lab with him as a scientist, because Peter's a scientist, and you're you're his assistant, and you worked you're working together to build prosthetics. Everyone knows where this is going. By the midpoint, he's Doctor Octopus, and he's a villain. You have to defeat him. You have to defeat the band of costumed supervillains he has released from the Ark, which is a prison to hold supervillains specifically. And through that, you, you level up. You get powers. I don't show it in the the gameplay I'm showing you. But there are tons of suits in this game. I'm wearing the classic suit in this video. And its power is Web Blossom, where you jump up and web everybody up. I don't ever use it, but that's its power. There's tons of suits from the comic history of Spider-Man in this game. Some original, I think. I can't remember. Uh, except, I think the Spartageddon one's the original one. The original Spider-Man suit for this. But there's tons of costumes to wear in this game. And most of them, not all of them, come with a superpower. A suit power, which changed the way you play. Or changes the way you play rather sorry um you the suit powers are activated with l3 r3 and the one i'm using in the video is unrelenting fury you just it makes all your attacks unblockable they don't they're not stronger they're just unblockable so because there's a couple of enemies in this game brute characters that just shrug off normal attacks and you got to use gadgets which are also in this game you have a gadget wheel you'll see it in the video i bring it up quite a lot and you select gadgets to help you in fights because you're going to be fighting the whole game that if I had to break down the gameplay of Spider-Man, it's go here, see a cutscene, beat up a bunch of guys. Follow a truck, see a cutscene, beat up a bunch of guys. 
That's it. Now there's some cinematic moments in here because Spider-Man is very, very cinematic. Even the comics and the movies. There's tons of like falling debris and just saving a person in a nick of time and dodging bullets in slow motion. The game's very cinematic. You're Spider-Man. It has to be. Uh, so that's the story. Defeat Dr. Octopus. There's tons in it. I don't want to say much more, even though I did say spoiler warning, but I'd be talking forever if I just talked about the big-ass story in this game. Just go and play it if you haven't already. I'm pretty sure you have by now because, again, Spider-Man. Everybody loves him. The movement of the game. Let's go to gameplay really quickly because I realize I've been talking for quite some time now. The movement of the game is momentum-based. Everything is to be done while moving. Combat, swinging, jumping, running. Everything flows as fast, as fluid, as long as you get the controls right. You can launch yourself at the apex of your swing to get momentum. You can sort of point strike to places and tap X really quickly to boost and continue the momentum. And you just you just move. There is a fast travel, but who wants to use that when you're Spider-Man? I mean, you swing through the city. You know, I only use the fast travel in a video because I'm solving crimes. While you're playing, most, like most open world games, there's just little mini events that happen in the world that you can go and do. Uh, there's crimes in Spider-Man. You get like already a police, he's hooked into the police radio frequency. Uh, and they report crimes as you swing around. I'm fast traveling because when you fast travel, it, uh, it resets the timer for you. So you only have to swing for a couple of seconds versus a couple of minutes for a crime to pop up. So yeah, there's a fast travel. You don't really need it. Uh, just swing around. You, you move really, really fast in this game. You're Spider-Man. And this game does a great job that of making you feel like Spider-Man. Later, one of the power-ups you get is you can charge your jump button, like hold it, and you just like point boost, you boost off the ground, or you can hold it while you're running to do like a, you get some, some air and you build momentum when you jump forward. And it's, oh, excuse me, it never not feels awesome. That's, that's the best way to put it. It always feels like, fuck yeah, you know, like I'm fucking Spider-Man. So that, they did a hell of a job, a bang-up job. When you're swinging, you can uh, click in L3 and like do a dive, which builds momentum while aiming straight at the ground. And then the objective there is to just swing before you touch the ground to continue your momentum forward while you're swinging. Again, it's all momentum-based. It's not like in Spider-Man 2. This is the first time I'll mention Spider-Man 2, which is for a long time the quintessential superhero game, the only good one, because all the other ones... Like, most superhero games are just movie tie-ins, and they're not very good. Spider-Man 2 changed that. It it, it brung... It, it made us believe that movie movie video games could be amazing. And uh, games about superheroes could be amazing. Spider-Man 2 really is the first good superhero game. And this game doesn't borrow much from it. It's its own thing. Uh, you can't pick up civilians like you could in Spider-Man 2. You can't swing off with you can't grab bad guys like you can in Spider-Man 2 and swing off with them and drop them off of buildings and stuff. Can't do any of that. I wish you could, but you can't. And that's okay. It's a different game. This game has unique moves called finishers, where you have a focus meter that you build while fighting. And when you have enough, you can hit triangle and circle to do a finisher, which is an instant KO on an enemy. Some brute enemies and some shielded enemies need two bars of focus to instantly take out. Which isn't too hard to build up. You build it up when hitting enemies or getting hit. And again, uh, we cover gadgets. I already did. There's a gadget wheel. There are tons of gadgets. Electric web. Concussion web. Uh, gr Anti-gravity matrix web. Which shoots them up into the air. And they, they're floating. Or they're stuck. And you can just beat them up. Uh, they can't defend themselves. Doesn't work on the brutes or the heavies. But doesn't matter. Electric web does. Uh, that That's about it. And the suit powers. Uh, again, some of it makes combat a lot easy, so a lot easier. So you probably want to pick the best suit power for your playstyle. If you use a lot of gadgets, the first suit power is actually really good because it constantly refills your uh, focus meter, so you can constantly do finishers or constantly heal yourself. So they solved the problem of your hero, how are regular goons beating you up by including an ability to heal yourself at the cost of your focus meter, and. To do that, you just press down on the D-pad when you have focus, and you can heal. You, you can continuously heal as long as you have focus. And that's how they solve the problem of, well, I'm Spider-Man. How am I getting fucking took out by Joe Schmo with a pistol? It's that you take damage uh, 
up to a point and then you'll pass out or whatever. But again, you can just heal. So it makes it like Spider-Man's a superhero so he can just keep fighting as long as you got the focus for it. And focus is built through fighting. So there you have it. Uh, moving on to the last thing in the game on my, my list is extra flourishes. This game tries really hard to convince you you're Spider-Man. And it asks, it asks a lot of questions about which I thought think is really cool they may not really know notice but when you do when you what you're seeing in the video is me is like just solving crimes around the area and after you solve a crime every time the police pull up and when the police pull up if you you can just jump away swing away but when they pull up they talk to you and they'll say things like thanks spidey but next time leave it to the professionals or like if you're fighting in front of a tanker that can explode they'll be like thanks spidey but that tanker could have exploded or sometimes they don't even say thanks. They just say, you shouldn't have did that or whatever. And Spider-Man never responds. Like, Spider this whole game, Spider-Man's talking extra shit to everybody. But to the police, he never responds unless it's in a cutscene. And I think that's a, I think that's an actual design choice. I don't think it's an oversight. I think they, the developers wanted us to be the ones to have a response to that. They wanted us to feel... Because that, that, there's nothing... that That is as close to Spider-Man's mindset as I think we get. I think... You just fought and almost died a bunch of brute uh, guys and dudes with guns and use all gadgets and your quick wits to beat them. And the police show up and say, we didn't need you to do that. How does that make you as a player feel? And I think this is what they were going for because it makes me feel like, oh, actually, you did need me to do that because there are crimes marked on my map and there's a set amount of them that I can solve. And if I don't solve them, it'll say zero of five forever. Meaning, if I don't solve these crimes, they don't get solved. So when I solve one and the cop says, you shouldn't have solved it, I'm like, no, actually, I should have solved it because you clearly weren't doing it. Now, that puts me into the mindset of a hero. Do heroes feel that way? Does Spider-Man specifically feel like the, the people need him? And is that what drives him to do this? Because as I said at the top of this video, I don't think he should be doing most of this. Some of it, sure, but most of the shit, he, he really needs to chill. Like the cops say, and not because like, oh, she'll let the cops do it, but because he has his own life to live. He can't be everywhere. Even Superman can't be everywhere. And Spider-Man understands that and he understands the cost of loss and all of that. But in this game, does he? In the game version of our Spider-Man, does he understand that? Because he rushes around and solves every crime and be beats everybody without a word of thanks from the cops. Even at their police, police precincts you can fast travel to, when you fast travel to them, the cops say, thanks, buddy, but we got it from here, you know, like, and it's like, oh, do you got it from here? Because I just fought dudes with laser guns, and last I checked, you're holding a 9 millimeter revolver. What are you going to do, you know? Uh, so, the game makes me, it, the, which probably the best design choice I've seen is, it makes you question, like, are you doing the right thing here? Like, is Spider-Man actually doing the right thing? And the game asks that question a lot, even though I don't think it notices it does that, but it's definitely doing that. Uh, and that, that that's one of the little cool things that I like. And, you know, aside from that, Spider-Man makes remarks while he's fighting. He talks a lot of shit like Spider-Man does. He makes jokes at inappropriate times while his life is in danger. It, I mean, it's, it's really fantastic. Uh, they did an excellent job of emulating Spider-Man from the comics and printing him into a game. It was be it's, it's beautiful. And I think, you know, it's a good game, you know, it's a good game. I just hate Spider-Man and I just, I hate him. I don't know, guys. I just hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Oh, a quick note. When you fast traveled, uh, there's only like four scenes, recycled scenes. I think they should add more scenes because I'm sick of seeing the same guy looking at the paper and then looking over at me like, oh, Spider-Man or like the girl with the boom box or me talking to the Spider-Man fake guy, like the uh, the cosplayer, or a person sleeping on me. I think those are the only uh, the only screens. So when you fast travel, you you quickly notice that those are the only screens, and it's like mm, probably add more screens. I don't know if they're going to do a two of this. They said they are. Probably Venom will be in it. Probably Green Goblin. They're not in this one. In my opinion, that's a missed opportunity. Would have been pretty sweet. Uh. Also, no symbiote costume. And I know Venom isn't introduced yet, so it wouldn't be here in this universe yet. But the Fantastic Four are introduced yet. There's a Fantastic Four outfit. There's two Fantastic Four outfits. They're not here. The Avengers uh, 
aren't introduced yet, yet you got the iron spider suit that Tony makes you. What's up? I don't know. Regardless, good game. Fun, fun, fun times is Spider-Man. I just, I just hate him. So I had to do this video right. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's everything, guys. Thanks for stopping in. Next week, Anthem, be there. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share, whatever. Be there for Anthem. We're doing Anthem, and it's going to be big as fuck. I'm going to do all sorts of editing. I'm going to, I'm going to be like not eating right. You know, I do that every week, but I'm going to be not eating right while playing Anthem. So it's special or, or whatever. It's better. Anyway, thanks for stopping in this week. See ya.